Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Green, Curriculum Team Leader of Health and Science at Dern Valley College. I'd like to welcome you to this YouTube video which revolves around the programme that you've applied for, which is the Access to HE Diploma in Health Science Professions. And in terms of this video, it will talk you through the advice, guidance about the course itself and also the interview process. So in terms of an overview of this video, it will last around 15 to 20 minutes and during this we'll introduce who we are and what we can offer you, provide you with an overview of the course that you've applied for to ensure it's the right course for you, for us to discuss expectations that we expect from all learners in our programmes, but also as a college as well, and also to give you time to think and reflect to any questions ahead of your telephone interview. Typically this is delivered face to face, but in light of the current situation we cannot do that. So to provide you with continuity, we are delivering this via a slightly different method. Um, and also the interviews are going to be done by a telephone interview as well. So we're also going to give you some hints and tips of what to expect when one of our admissions tutors calls you. So to set the scene behind our programme, so our Access to Higher Education Diploma in Health Science Professions, this is full qualification title, is delivered at Dern Valley College campus and has been designed to help you progress onto higher education. Ultimately this course is designed to help you progress onto higher education, so that means university or university centres. Um, if you are not wanting to progress onto higher education or university, then what I'd like to consider and think about is, is this the course for you? Can discuss that during a telephone interview if that's the case and we can also discuss other options that might be available. Back to our programme, so it's validated by CERTA, so that is our awarding body. Uh, most A-levels are um, examining bodies and examples can be AQA, Edexcel. Um, our course is a nationally recognised qualification and provides you with the academic knowledge, skills and behaviours to enter qualification. Um, without traditional qualifications such as A-levels, BTECs or other level 3s. Most of these courses typically last two years, however our programme is an intense fast track programme that lasts one year. So ultimately work will be twice um, as fast and ultimately will be um, challenging, it's not going to be easy. But the courses that we offer include a level 3 access to HE diploma in health science professions and we also deliver a level 2 diploma in progression to further study in health science professions which is one of our bridging courses. In terms of our qualification structure, ultimately our qualification in order to achieve the full diploma you need to achieve 60 credits and the way that this qualification is broken down is that 15 credits are ungraded so that comprises five units currently and 45 credits are graded and that's ultimately 11 units. So ultimately you'll study 16 units during this academic year. That typically lasts um, around 32 weeks. Our graded credits uh, carry UCAS points and they can equate to other qualifications. So if we look at the diagram on the right hand side, how does the Access to HE diploma compare so A levels, if you achieve 45 distinction credits, and that is the equivalent of achieving a AAA grade profile. In terms of UCAS tariff points, what do I actually mean by that? Now, all basically UCAS tariff point size, they translate the qualifications and grades into a numerical value. Uh, and many qualifications, but not all of them, have a UCAS tariff value. And that all depends on the qualification size and the grade that you've achieved. So obviously we've also got the one below the 45 distinctions, which is 30 distinctions and 15 merits, and that equates to an ABB grade profile. So if we use the example, if you want to study the Bachelor of Science with honours in midwifery, if you want to progress on to becoming a midwife, you will need to achieve at least 30 distinctions and 15 merits in order to successfully um, progress onto that profession. That is just in terms of academic entry requirements. So there are also other entry requirements that you'd need to have as well before you could actually go into one of those courses. And we'll discuss that a little bit later. In terms of our structure, we'll always introduce you to the core subject areas and they're delivered normally through the via um, the ungraded units before progressing into more challenging graded units within each subject area. 
in terms of the subjects that we'll study, so this is currently based on our 2019-20 uh, curriculum model. So our program is holistic and it embraces what is called the biopsychosocial model of health. So how biology, psychology and sociology all um, have an equal and important role within the healthy uh, lifestyle of anybody. And that ultimately enables you to progress and broaden your knowledge in which health and illness can be examined in both clinical practice and also social practice as well. So this ultimately gives you an overview of all the different units that we are currently studying. If you want to take a look at these, I'd probably advise that you just pause the video, take a look, and then when you're ready, move back on. Um, an important thing also to look at is study skills. So as well as giving you the academic uh, understanding and knowledge, we also look at developing your academic writing skills and presentation skills, which are essentially invaluable to your progression to higher education. So we teach you how to write academically, and we also develop what's called your presentation skills, ultimately how you can communicate with people face to face. In terms of methods of assessment, our methods of assessment are very different to A-level programmes as a representative example, where they're normally delivered through examinations and practical assessments, which are delivered typically after two years worth of study. We assess you ongoingly. Um, and utilise these common assessment methods such as essays, presentations, report writing, completing workbooks which might be written or electronic, to engage in professional discussions surrounding key topics and also internal examination. That's just one um, and one of the units that you do for biology. Our teaching team specialises in anatomy and physiology, psychology, health, social policy and study skills. We have staff that are either current or have been uh, previously healthcare professionals and also worked in the public sectors. And we also, all of us have professional degrees ranging from postgraduate level all the way through to doctoral, so PhD level. And this is our teaching team. So ultimately on our team we also have Joanne Vaughan, Jackie Burroughs and Tina Crossland. All have specialist areas in psychology, biomedical science, adult nursing and midwifery. So in terms of our entry requirements for level 3 access, so the access to HE diploma in health science professions, we expect that learners are age 19 and over. If you are under the age of 19 prior to September, then we advise that you explore some of our other courses such as our BTEC national qualifications. In terms of academic qualifications, we expect you to have GCSE English at grade C or 4 or above, and also to have GCSE Mathematics at at least grade D or 5 or above, or also acquire functional skills level 2 in Mathematics. We also expect you to accrue or already have paid or unpaid industry experience in a relevant health and social care setting. Ultimately, if you are wanting, for example, to be a midwife, you need to find and obtain experience within that specific area. That is going to be essential in the application to universities. Universities will not accept a student with just an academic profile. They also want to see the skills that you've developed during practice. And also we want to look and see if you demonstrate the desire and qualities to progress onto university and high level study after completing our course. And we also may ask for internal and or external references. So this is just a little bit of a clip on extracurricular activities. So things that we do outside of the classroom. So tutors um, as part of extracurricular enrichment um, have visited the Body World Museum experience, which links heavily to biology. Um, one of the best ways to learn anatomy and physiology is through cadaveric dissection. Um, and this ultimately gives you an insight into that. It's called Gunther von Hagen's Original Body Worlds Experience. They went to London, but also there is one in Amsterdam. As part of our extracurricular enrichment as well, we have what is called an Access Alumni, where all our previous learners are invited to come in to speak to current learners to talk about their experience since they've completed our course. It's a fantastic morning. We've done one this year again, and it's been very successful. 
ultimately learners from Leeds Beckett University, the University of Bradford, Sheffield Hallam University and the University of Huddersfield came this year and they ultimately act as ambassadors and also discussed um, how they are progressing at university. Very, very good. So as we outlined earlier, industry experience is essential for university and it's a requirement for all nursing, midwifery and allied health programmes that you have experience that is either paid or unpaid. You need to source this experience yourself, either through employment or through volunteering. So Sheffield Helm University on their website gives very good guidance on um, the experience that you need. So for example, if you want to study adult nursing, what they recommend is that you gain experience on hospital wards, in hospices, nursing homes, GP surgeries, and care experience that might be through a care home or a nursing home, but not personal care experience. That isn't enough. We also help you apply to university uh, through what is called the UCAS application process. At the start of every year, we always go through this with new students, as ultimately this will determine whether you will get onto your next steps. So we support with the UCAS application process itself and also uh, go through what is called the personal statement, which is a 4,000 character, um, about a sheet and a half uh, piece of work that ultimately sells yourself and tells you why ultimately you want to become who you want to become. During this time we also actively encourage you to attend open days. This might be very difficult in current climate but when you do get the first opportunity um, to do so, the very good uh, ways of gaining first-hand advice from admissions tutors and ultimately to see the courses that you might be buying into in the following years. So you might not have yet started looking at the courses that you want wanting to progress on to after um, starting this but ultimately if you do then if you go on to most university websites explore the courses that you want wanting to explore um, so by going on to Sheffield Hallam University in this case and going on to paramedic science by clicking on the entry requirements and looking for the access to HE course it identifies what they require you to achieve on a course of this nature so to progress on to paramedic practice, what they expect you to achieve um, on an access course is um, ultimately 15 credits at distinction level and the rest can be pass or merits. So that ultimately gives you an idea of how hard it is to get onto a course and what you need to do to be able to achieve it. In terms of funding, so this ultimately is a bit of advice and guidance on funding. Um, ultimately there are many ways that you can fund one of these courses so for example the level 3 access course you can either self fund either through full or part payment you can get your employer to fund you if they are willing to if you are aged between 19 to 23 and it's your first full level 3 there is a government funded program available for you that will remit your fees most students do opt to take what's called the advanced learner loan and that is a government funded loan through Student Finance England. It's very similar to what you take when you go to university. And ultimately the course fees, although it does say 2018-19, this is current, is currently £3,380. For the level 2 access, it is currently £994. And these are the different options that you can fund that. So it's fee remission if it's your first full level 2. So ultimately your fees get wavered. Also, your fees get wavered if you are in current receipt of a qualifying benefit. We'll discuss this with you if that applies to you during your interview. And again, employer-funded or self-funded options are available. So what do you need to do to succeed and achieve your goals? So ultimately, um, what we've got here is the iceberg illusion. So the tip of the iceberg is typically what people see with success. But what they don't actually see... Um, with success is the actual iceberg itself and ultimately um, the things that you'll need to do to ultimately be successful. So what employability skills do you need to be successful? What qualities and values do you need to develop or acquire to be successful? And what sacrifices are you willing to make in order to succeed? As we've mentioned this is a two year course condensed down into one year which means that time management is going to be absolutely essential what are you willing to sacrifice ultimately to achieve your goals to progress onto your next steps 
something for you to reflect on. So when we look at our expectations, all learners are on a six week probationary period where we ensure that are you on the right course? Is this the right level for you? Um, we expect 100% attendance for every single learner. We emphasise professionalism and embracing the core values of compassionate practice. We expect you to all perform to your highest performance, to be committed to this programme and ultimately to have the courage to do things that you wouldn't regularly do on a daily basis. So we expect you to ultimately push yourselves outside of your comfort zone in a safe and secure learning environment. Now this is probably one of the most very important slides on this and this looks at where have our learners progressed on towards since this course has started. Um, when I started overseeing this programme in 2015 and 16 um, and these are all the different degree destinations that our learners have progressed on towards. This list isn't all the courses, it's basically gone what current evidence we've got. I still need to populate some extra courses on there. So if you want to take a look at those, I would advise that you pause it and when you're ready, restart the video. And these are all the different universities that our learners have progressed on towards. So our biggest pull um, is Sheffield Hallam University. However, most of these universities are within a driving distance, very similar to what it might take you to get to Sheffield Hallam during rush hour. Um, but ultimately, we've got a broad range of progression destinations showing how successful this course actually is. So some hints and tips for the telephone interview. So one of our admissions tutors will contact you by telephone between your allocated time slot. Your interview will last around 10 to 15 minutes. During your interview, we're not trying to trip you up, but we'll ask you questions about the following, so make sure that you're prepared to answer them. Ultimately, we're wanting to know what's your degree and career aspirations. Why do you want to do our course? What qualifications have you got? We'll be asking specifically your English and Maths, so check the entry requirements. What industry experience are you willing to obtain or have currently got? Discussions surrounding your additional support needs, how can we support your learning whilst you study with us? We'll also discuss the funding of the programme and also financial support that might be available, such as childcare and bursary, and also ask you to disclose any criminal convictions if you have. By disclosing one, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will uh, be rejected, but what we need to do is we need to have the discussion surrounding it. So on a final note, what I want to show you is a video that ultimately um, will set the scene behind the majority of courses that our course can lead on towards. It's a very short yet inspiring video, which is very pertinent in our current climate, which shows a broad range of careers that ultimately you could potentially progress towards. We are, we are here every day and every night of every year. We've seen it all from newborn to old age. We are experts in the human body and human emotion too. We answer 11 million emergency calls a year, but we never panic. We take a reading, agree a plan, make a cuppa. We don't do it for the thank yous. We do it for Janice, Alfie, for Jack, for all of us. It's not your normal job. We're mending lives looking for veins, keeping the music playing. We say hello, we wave goodbye. We're always here, but we're always there. We are Michelle, James, Carrie, Yvonne, Adam and Frankie. And at 3.49 this morning, we were Maisie too. Seven pounds, two ounces, all doing well. We are the NHS. We are recruiting now. Search nursing careers.
I'd just like to thank you all for watching this YouTube video and good luck with your interviews. Thank you.